Hello Rocket fans and welcome back to the Copenhagen Suborbital's Rocket Shop where we continue working on the world's only crewed, crowd-funded space rocket, Spica. Today is March 7th and it is time for some rocket updates. So as many of you might know from our previous videos, the current theme in our Rocket Shop these days has been Spica's propellant tanks. They of course are the core of the rocket's airframe, so a lot is dependent on getting them right. Especially when it will have 2 tons of ethanol and liquid oxygen sitting inside them, pressurized to over 20 bar and pulling a few g's of acceleration during flight. And since you've already seen us roll and weld the cylindrical sections of the tanks, it's time we moved on to the bulkheads. You might remember earlier we cut a number of holes on these sloping heads using our CNC plasma cutter. They of course are for tubing which will fill and deplete the propellants, pressurize the tanks and hold various sensors, measuring devices and possibly cameras inside the tanks. The tubing has been prepared earlier as well for the most part, so today John and Christian started welding them into place. But before loading their welding guns, they first needed to clean up and prepare the plasma cut edges, do some vertical and horizontal alignment and once all that was in place, they could start tack welding the pieces to the bulkheads and later finishing them in full welds. Christian and John made good progress on two bulkheads that day, which means we have two more to go for next time. But in the meanwhile, Thomas and Scott were working on another interesting development, which is measuring 3D printed coaxial swirl fuel injectors that we just got. Hi Rocket fans! So as you can see, I'm not in the workshop now. Um, as uh, with the rest of the world, we're also struck by the virus. So, uh, so no workshop for the coming weeks. But we, uh, we have some interesting news anyway. So if you've been following along, you'll notice that we have been playing with these uh, swirlers for quite a bit. And we have, uh, so we've optimized the geometry. Uh, the current design is that each swirl consists of three elements. So we have an outer swirl element, inner part, and a lid. And so these are silver soldered together to form a single swirling element. And that works uh, really great. We have been making a lot of uh, flow tests and we're very happy with the results. So we have actually ordered parts for making these, uh, I mean, a, a whole brass made swirl based injector for the BPM-5 engine to, to test fire an engine with these. So there'll be uh, 19 of these elements in the BPM-5 engine for this test. Now, so we've got an order out for, for these parts, um, but in the meantime, we actually got an offer that was too tempting to refuse. So we were contacted by a company in Sweden, Digital Metal, and they specialize in uh, 3D printing of metal. And um, so they offered to print some of these elements for us in uh, 316 stainless steel. And so that was an offer that was simply too good to uh, refuse. So, uh, so while we have uh, perfected this three element design or three part design, then uh, what they suggested was to make it uh, somewhat simpler. So I got a photo of it here. So each swirler is now just a single piece because it's 3D printed. So the 3D printing method that they're using is binder jetting. So uh, if you don't know binder jetting, it's basically you have a bed uh, where you lay out a very uniform sheet of uh, metal particles. Then with a, something like a, a print jet, uh, inkjet print jet head, you print a glue or a polymer binder onto the parts you want where you want the particles to bind together. And then you alternate between depositing a new layer and uh, printing the binder. And in the end, you have this green element, which is very fragile because all the metal particles are just held together by an by organic binder. Um, then, so after that follows some uh, sindering steps and, and burning out of the uh, binder. And in the end, you're then left with uh, a, a stainless steel uh, 3D printed object like these swirlers. So we, uh, we just got them and we are uh, looking super much forward to, uh, to putting them through the test. Um, it, uh, it's a bit uh, of a simpler process in this way, that each element is made of one piece and it also holds some promise, if this works well, that uh, larger elements of the injector can be made as a single piece. So we are looking really forward to this and uh, we'll have some more news on this uh, very soon. 
Like Thomas said, we can give you a better update on how these 3D printed elements perform and compare to our machined elements once Scott goes through the water flow test data. Until then, you can brush up on rocket fuel injectors with a few of our older videos or a recent one done by Scott Manley. But before you go, take a quick look at what Martin has been doing for the astronaut seat prototype. Making a seat for a space capsule which is strong enough, light and somewhat comfortable to sit in is one thing, but the astronaut is also going to experience some short, sudden spikes in G-loads during parachute deployment and splashdown, which can be a bit uncomfortable, so we also need a system that would help dampen these shocks as well. And now that the seat frame prototype is nearly done, Martin has been working on a few screws which will mount these guide blocks to the seat frame. The idea is to have these blocks slide up and down on a rail like this, guiding the seat under its damper mechanism, helping absorb the shocks. And also, Jakob hung and connected the fume extractor for our ceramic oven that Martin and Benet helped make the weekend before. That is all for now, so as always, thank you for watching and supporting. If you don't want to miss any of our future updates, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so we can see you next time when we get one step closer to space. Copenhagen Suborbitals is a non-profit all-volunteer project. The reason we are getting so close to reaching space on our speaker rocket is because all of our crowdfunding supporters. If you've been following this project and feel passionate about new ways of exploring space and building rockets, you can help us out by going over to our website www.compsub.com and becoming a supporter with a small monthly or one-time donation that helps us pay workshop rent and buy materials. And in return, you get all these insider videos on building a space program which you don't really get anywhere else. So on behalf of everybody at Copenhagen Suborbitals, thank you for your support and we'll see you next time.